And is there something in the, the LA DNA that uh, is just inherently hostile to rail and that, uh, you know, uh, uh, the MTA sort of had to force this stuff down the, the, the locality's throat. Uh, yes, I, I would agree with you. It, this was a really hard thing to get started. It, uh, the, the tenacity of the leadership here in the 70s, I found really remarkable in, in writing up the story. Uh, they had to fight for it, and they, and they were getting a lot of pushback from the LA Times, uh, just as, as one example. You know, whether or not it's hostile, it's, I think that you know, to get to 50%, agreement, in a, again, in a county this large, that's a tough thing. And when these ballot measures lost, you know, they went down, you know, they had maybe 43, 44% approval. And again, if you look at the urban kind of center of LA, you know, not, not the, you know, maybe the more suburban parts, it, it had overwhelming support. So, you know, it's kind of, it's, I, I, I hate to, uh, to generalize too much, but I do think there was, there's a segment of the culture here, you know, particularly the people who moved out in the post-war years. A lot of them were essentially refugees from Eastern cities, and their idea of transit was some dank, dark, dangerous New York subway. You know, they didn't want the density, you know, the tall buildings. It just, they, a lot of people came here to escape that. And so I'm not saying that was everybody, but I think that was very much the culture here uh, of enough of a segment that it made a ballot measure a hard thing to get over that 50%. Right. Right, and well, I mean, one of the great ironies, I think, of Los Angeles history um, is that it, uh, a useful way to think about it is a collection of railway suburbs that just bled together, that just sort of knitted themselves together with, with urbanization.